is diagnosis of the inguinal hernia, how to confirm it. So this is done by history taking, physical examination, and some relevant investigation, if any we need. But usually this is a clinical diagnosis. So history and physical examinations are really important. When taking the history of a man, okay, let me underline and discuss this. When taking the history of a man with a possible hernia, it is important to inquire about the risk factors for herniation. We have discussed this in the beginning of the class. Occupation is important one, particularly heavy manual type of worker has a high chance of herniation because of constant rise in intra-abdominal pressure all the time. Quite easy to understand. If somebody is having respiratory illness, a chronic type of respiratory illness, like chronic bronchitis, like emphysema, which are part of COPD, bronchial asthma, bronchiectasis, even tuberculosis, bronchogenic carcinoma, they all can result in herniation over a period of time. If somebody is having difficulty passing urine, prostatic hypertrophy or hyperplasia, okay, uh, this uh, is the problem of prostate gland. We all know that. So in this condition, the person cannot pass urine, isn't it? person cannot pass urine properly. So the person strains after going to the toilet. So over a period of time, that can also increase the intra-abdominal pressure and results in herniation. Similarly, constipation, no need of any discussion. Constipation is another one. This factor tend to increase the intra-abdominal pressure and that's how they make us hernia. Let's move on. Now, another important history you need to take is whether there is any discomfort or pain in the groin. Discomfort or pain in the groin. Now, when caused by straining, it may be sudden in onset. Now, let me you know talk in a bit of different way here. Please listen, then we'll go to the slide. When the hernia starts, okay, when the hernia starts, in the beginning, there is a small bulge there and there may not be any pain also. And sometimes that bulge only comes when the person takes a bit of walk, you know, a bit of a brisk type of walking. And people have that habit, isn't it? Morning walk or evening walk. If they are having hypertension or diabetes or those type of problem, then the doctor have, has already counseled them for a brisk type of walking. So during that time, there's a small bulge development in the inguinal region and that may not be very painful. But later on, okay, later on, if uh, it converts into irreducible type of hernia or obstructed type of hernia or definitely in a strangulated hernia, the pain will be much more. So it may occur before a lump is noticed and frequently, the patient described it as a dragging sensation there in the beginning. It's a dragging type of sensation because something is, uh, you know, coming downwards from the abdominal cavity. The pain may radiate to the scrotum, okay, in case of male. It often described as being worse in the daytime and it increases with incarceration and strangulation or even in obstructed hernia. So what, uh, what is the you know, message we need to take from this slide? Pain may be there or may not be there in the case of inguinal hernia. In the beginning, the pain, if it is there, it is a very mild dragging type of sensation only. And if there is a constant type of pain, then already the hernia is complicated. Let's move on. Another important uh, you know, symptom which the patient may complain is a lump or mass in the groin region or in the scrotum. This lump or mass, okay, in the beginning it is smaller and later on it may be bigger. When the person cough or when the person strains, the mass will become bigger. So this is very important point. So it is frequently painless, but can be painful, depends on the situation again. If it's still reducible, 
it appears and disappear in relation to the position that is it reduces on line so what does that mean when the person stands when the person walk the mass appear there when the person goes back to bed when the person lies down comfortably okay the mass disappears so this is called reducible hernia it may never disappear also so let me underline this for you it may never disappear and it has progressed to insarcated hernia or obstructed hernia or even strangulated hernia if never disappear and new onset of pain occurs then strangulation must be assumed until proven otherwise why why until proven otherwise because this is a serious condition okay it it needs attention quickly we can wait for certain duration for obstructed or incarcerated type of hernia but no time is there for the strangulated hernia because of ischemia of the bowel another type of symptoms may be features of obstruction or strangulation there may be abdominal pain there may be vomiting okay there may be constipation and there may be abdominal distension these are four classical features of intestinal obstruction abdominal pain this is colicky in nature because right now i am talking about intestinal obstruction but i am talking if i am talking about strangulation the pain may be different there now please listen again i have already explained this before but this is such a important one okay please pay attention at the site of the hernia that means at the inguinal region it looks very red there is warmth okay and there is a severe constant type of pain at that region but later on because of complication development strangulated hernia may result in peritonitis because of perforation of the bowel the patient may develop peritonitis and the symptom and sign of peritonitis will take over after certain time and that are different now let's talk about what are the signs during uh, you know physical examination what we get if the hernia is there in the groin the examiner must discriminate between an inguinal hernia and a femoral hernia that is one and another one between the inguinal hernia and the scrotal mass sometimes the mass may be there in the scrotum itself it is not not a part of hernia or not a not hernia at all who knows it may be a case of testicular tumor it may be a case of pure hydrocele okay so these are the important points a hernia in the groin should be examined in the following way we inspect it in the beginning we palpate after that we can go for percussion auscultation and trans illumination test according to the situation and don't forget to examine the other side also okay who knows the other side may be completely normal so we know what is the abnormality in the disease side so these are the part of the examination and i am sure you already know the meaning of this term inspection means observation we just look there palpation we touch we feel okay we palpate different areas percussion is a special part of examination we want to hear what sound is coming after give a percussion note there auscultation you use your stethoscope and trans illumination is a important test in surgery you need a relatively darker environment you need a pen touch and you put that touch on one side of the mass and look how you know the mass glows there this is called trans illumination test now please pay attention let's talk about inspection inguinal hernias are best examined with the patient standing okay we always do that patient is standing later on you can ask the patient to lie down and simply examine again just to make sure whether the mass is still there or it disappears now inspection of a hernia helps to determine the site of the hernia so to explain this those 
appearing above and medial to the pubic tubercle or the inguinal hernia and those appear below and lateral to the pubic tubercle or femoral hernia okay so uh, above and medial to the pubic tubercle inguinal hernia because of the location of superficial inguinal ring and those appearing below and lateral to the pubic tubercle or femoral hernia because of the location of the femoral triangle Another part of the inspection is whether the lump extend down into the scrotum or not. Very, very important inspection. So if this is a hernia and if it has extended down into the scrotum, we call it complete type of hernia. And usually it is an indirect type of hernia. We all know that. If there are any other scrotal swellings or not, we need to find it out. Palpation is coming later. And this is just an inspection. You just look at this time, okay? You'll confirm every of your observation by palpation. If there are any swellings on the normal side or not, you also see that. Normal side means the side which is not complained by the patient. Sometimes patient thinks that side is normal, but we may find some abnormality there. So we also uh, have to see that. Whether the lump is associated with a scar from previous surgery or trauma. You need to note that if it is present. Sometimes remember the hernias may be recurrent type of hernia. Who knows? Okay, that may be there. Look at the color. The skin color should be normal. If the hernia is strangulated, the skin color may be reddish. We all know that. Okay, it looks reddish. I'm not talking about the color of the bowel here. The color of the bowel in case of strangulation is black, but we are talking about the color of the skin, which is in the inguinal region, and this is reddish. Another point during inspection is, look for the visible cough impulse. What does that mean? Ask the patient to cough, and the patient should stand during this time. Coughing may increase the size of the hernia. Now, in which, which situation coughing will increase the size of the hernia and in which situation coughing does not increase the size of the hernia? Yes? What is the answer? Sir, in hernia, it increases the size and other mass, the tumor, etc. will not Roll. increase the size. Sir, only the hernia so the size will be increased sir, because the pressure build up in this will increase the size of that. But sir, in other masses, the pressure will not be built up like that and the mass will not be increased. Like sir, for example, tumor, the mass will not be increased. Okay, good. Both of the students are answering it correctly. But one more point I need to add here. You're absolutely right. In hernia, the cough impulse is positive. There is a visible cough impulse. Means after the patient cough, you know, the bulge will be more prominent or if the bulge was not there before, the bulge may appear there. But there are different types of hernia. Reducible hernia, irreducible hernia, okay, incarcerated hernia, obstructed hernia, and strangulated hernia. In, okay, other type, like obstructed hernia, insarcerated hernia, okay, reducible and irreducible hernia, the cough impulse may be still present but in strangulated hernia, there is absent of the cough impulse, even if it is hernia. And another answer which you have provided is absolutely correct. If there are some other mass, why the cough impulse should be present there, okay? There is no, no issue of cough impulse there. Let's move on. Now, after uh, inspection, let's move on to the palpation. So let's feel that area there. We always start with temperature and tenderness. Now, temperature means we, we feel that area, whether there is a rise in temperature or not. This rise in temperature is a feature of inflammation. So we just want to check it there by touching there. And always the touch should be from the back of your hand. Okay, not from the palmar side. It should be on the dorsal side or dorsal aspect of the hand. Just feel it there. And to make sure, feel on the other side also. 
and make sure whether the temperature is high or normal. Tenderness, similarly, you give gentle pressure there and after you give pressure, look at the face of the patient. Don't look at that side only. Always look at the face and what, how the patient is changing the facial expression. It shows how tender is that area. Tenderness means pain felt by the patient when you touch that particular site. Another part of the palpation is a position and extent of the hernia. Where, where exactly? Is it inguinal? Is it femoral? And how far it has descended down? What is the consistency of the hernial content? Consistency. Now, consistency means it's a type of feeling, isn't it? If a bowel is present inside the hernia as it's contained, then it is soft. Okay, It may be soft, but it depends. What is the content inside that bowel also? If it is loaded with fecal matter, okay, it is not that softer. So different points are there. Another is to get above the swelling. I talked about this point a little while earlier. To get above the swelling means you feel or palpate that inguinal region with your thumb and index finger. If you feel something is coming from above, you know, you have that feeling there, then this is a case of hernia. If you feel the mass is not coming from above, means you can easily get above the swelling, then it is a pure scrotal swelling. It may be a case of tumor in the testes. It may be a case of hydrocyl there. So this is a very important test to get above the swelling. So uh, let me check whether you have understood it or not. If I can get above the swelling, is this hernia or hydrocyl? Hernia, sir. Hernia. No, listen to the question again. If I can get okay above the swelling means I can get above the swelling uh, very easily. Is this hernia or hydrocell? Hernia. 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 Hernia, sir. Now, I think I have to explain this again because uh, you, are, you are not, uh, you know, uh, getting it here. Okay. So listen again. Let me explain this. To get above the swelling means the swelling is purely in the scrotum. That's why I can get above the swelling. Clear? If the swelling is descending from above and entering into the scrotum, I cannot get above the swelling. I cannot. Okay. Like, isn't it? So if this yes. question is asked again, okay, uh, uh, list, first, uh, you know, try to understand the meaning, what the exam is trying to ask. To get above the swelling means I can feel the swelling is only in the scrotum. It is not in the inguinal region. That means it is coming from the scrotal side or testis side. And this is hydrocell. But if I can not get above the swelling, then it is coming from above. Okay, I can still feel it. It is not only present inside the scrotum. So probably this is a case of hernia. Let's move on. Another is an impulse on coughing. This is also confirmed by palpation now. We have done this in inspection, but let, let's confirm on palpation. Ask the patient to cough, okay? Touch at that site and just feel that, you know, impulse on your finger. If you do that, okay, the diagnosis of hernia is almost confirmed. Is the swelling reducible or not? Another important palpation examination. Just push it gently. If it doesn't go back on its own, push it gently. And it, if it is going back, this is known as reducible hernia. And reducible hernia are not that very complicated. But having said that, they can convert into irreducible hernia or obstructed hernia anytime. So as far as possible, I'll plan elective surgery, even in case of reducible hernia. Now, another type of test we do is a ring occlusion test. Okay, a ring occlusion test. We'll talk about that. Okay. Now, the ring occlusion test will be talked a little bit later. So, 
I'll give you a little bit of uh, information right now. Now, if you give, uh, you know, occlusion to the deep inguinal ring, for example, after reducing the hernia, you, you compress the deep inguinal ring site and ask the patient to cough. Now, if uh, that impulse is hitting your finger exactly there, then which hernia is this? Which hernia? Sir, sir direct inguinal hernia. If, um, uh, sir, if bulging, if not bulging, then indirect inguinal hernia. Exactly. Okay. So what, what uh, is the point here? If the hernia is not coming downwards at all, it's just feeling hitting your finger, means the bulging is not seen there. It has to be the indirect hernia because you are applying pressure and the hernia cannot enter into the deep inguinal ring. But direct inguinal hernia cannot be blocked by this maneuver. It is coming medial, uh, you know, to that uh, deep inguinal ring means the medial side is affected there. So the hernia can still come out after the patient cough and it is not occluded by your finger. So this is a, a direct inguinal hernia. It is all about, you know, the application of anatomy knowledge here. What are you doing and which structure you are compressing? Now, though we have already talked about this, let's quickly go through this. Uh, regarding the temperature, the skin overlying the hernia is same to the surrounding. If temperature is increased, then it suggests strangulation or inflammation. Okay, we already know that. It is a risky situation if the temperature rises there because it may be a case of strangulated hernia. Regarding the tenderness, hernia are usually non-tender, but tenderness, if it is present, it again shows a strangulation or inflammation. Patient feels a bit uncomfortable when you check for the tenderness, but that's, that is not a tenderness, you know. Uh, I already told you, look at the face of the patient. If it is really painful, patient will change the facial expression. Don't ask the patient whether it is uncomfortable. Is it, is it uh, causing pain for you? Not like that. Look at the face. That is important point. Regarding the position and extent, it descends into scrotum, in case of male, and levia majora, in case of female, then it is inguinal hernia. There's no doubt about it. If it remains confined to the groin, above the inguinal ligament, and medial to the pubic tubercle, this is inguinal, and below the inguinal ligament, and lateral to the pubic tubercle, this is femoral hernia. So it is all about medial to pubic tubercle or lateral to the pubic tubercle, which is very easy, you know, anatomical landmark to feel and above the inguinal ligament or below the inguinal ligament. So accordingly, we can separate whether it is inguinal hernia or femoral hernia. Regarding the consistency, means what is the, you know, content inside that hernial sac? Is, uh, is it momentum? Is it intestine? Is it something else? Okay, so accordingly, the consistency may differ. If it is doughy and granular, it is called omentoseal, or it is found in omentoseal. Let's explain like that. And what is omentoseal? What is omentoseal? Omentum, sir. Uh, omen there is a protrusion of There is a swelling in momentum, sir, basically. Very easy, easy question I'm asking here, isn't it? The content of the hernia is omentum. Absolutely. The greater momentum is present as the content of the hernia. And this momentum is a special, you know, a modification of our peritoneum. It has got a lot of fat. It has got lymphoid tissues there. And it is rich in blood circulation or blood supply. So it feels quite doughy and granular when we feel it. This is the meaning. Whereas elastic and soft type of feeling is in interosial, but if it is loaded with fecal matter, the feeling may be slightly different. And if it is strangulated hernia, it is tense and tender. Tense, the skin is shiny there. Okay, um, it is like uh, we are uh, we are feeling a bit of uh, you know indurated type of feeling there, a little bit firm to hard type of feeling, and it is extremely tender. Now, to get above the swelling, a differentiate inguinal scrotal swelling from an scrotal swelling. 
inguino scrotal means the swelling has uh, you know started from the inguinal region and it has entered into the scrotum so inguino scrotal and only scrotal means there is no swelling in the inguinal region if we can uh, get above the swelling okay then it is a scrotal swelling already talked about if to get above the swelling is not possible this is inguinal hernia because it is coming from above and uh, it is of no use in femoral hernia so this test is not done in femoral hernia now look at this picture here okay this is uh, uh, known as uh, a test which we do to get above the swelling to get above the swelling this is how you do it with the thumb and index finger or other finger you catch at the inguinal site okay and feel it whether you can still palpate the mass or not if the same mass which you have felt in the scrotum is felt here also and a little bit higher up also then it is a clear cut sign of inguinal hernia means it is coming from above but i can only feel the mass here in the scrotum and in this inguinal region there is no mass felt that means i can get above the swelling it is purely a scrotal type of mass now, another test which we have already discussed you know this is a bit of a detail type of description so that it is very useful for you later on even if you cannot catch when i am explaining it okay please repeat it again i am 100% sure uh, these points will be quite clear to you okay uh, so this is a very important topic let me remind you again it is a classical sign for uncomplicated hernia so in this uh, you know uh, examination how we do it keep the patient in a standing position see there okay, always okay keep the patient in a standing position the root of the scrotum is held between the index and the thumb and ask the patient to cough we have already seen in that picture also so what is the result okay if palpable cough impulse is present that means the content of hernia is forcing out and separate the examining finger because it has started from the abdominal cavity when you cough there is increased pressure in the abdominal cavity and the content of the hernia is forced downward and that's why we can feel the cough impulse so it indicates uncomplicated reducible hernia that is the most common one whereas it is absent in strangulated hernia okay this is the most important cause you need to mention first and it it is absent in obstructed hernia also but in the earlier cases of obstructed hernia it may still be felt but usually in the late cases of obstructed hernia or incarcerated hernia it may be absent and another is when the neck of the hernial sac has developed adhesion okay the pressure may not reflect directly into the sac then cough impulse may be absent another important you know examination is the swelling reducible or not reducible or not so we have to check so how to do that hernia reduces itself when the patient lies down now usually it occurs in direct hernia because direct hernia occurs from a larger surface area it is occurring from that larger triangle like structures okay so quite easy to understand and if hernia is reduced okay by pressure okay hernia is reduced by pressure which is known as taxis it is a indirect type of hernia we we need a little bit pressure sometimes to push the hernia back because uh, it has uh, come down from the deep inguinal ring deep inguinal ring is not a very wide structure so we need to apply a little bit of pressure so that hernia will go back that is called taxis it is 
is seen in indirect inguinal hernia. And these are the conditions when hernia cannot be reduced even after pushing. And these are irreducible hernia. Okay, the term itself tells us obstructed hernia and strangulated hernia. Now, see here, identification of the type of hernia is another examination we are uh, going to talk now. So this is done by two important tests, which are known as ring occlusion test and three finger test. This three finger test is also known as G-man's test. Okay, ring occlusion test, let me underline this, and three finger test. Now, these tests are applied only when hernia is reducible. Otherwise, this test doesn't have any significance. It is a confirmatory test to differentiate direct and indirect inguinal hernia. Now, how to do that? Ring occlusion test, uh, I already explained a little bit. First of all, the hernia is reduced. If uh, it doesn't go back on its own, we need to push it, okay, and try to reduce it first. Then the thumb is placed over deep inguinal ring and patient is asked to cough. Now one small point I want to ask you, where is a deep inguinal ring? According to the surface anatomy, where? Yes? Anyone? Sir, sir it's uh, uh, 2.5 above the uh, medial, uh, med uh, medial to the uh, pubic tuber. Yeah, sir. Um, sir, basically, sir, um, sir, it is above the midpoint of the inguinal ligaments sir, and lateral to the uh, epigastric vessel. And sir, it is formed by, like, like, sir, of course, the transverse, uh, transverse fascia. Sir. I mean, leaves provide the posterior covering for this inguinal ligament. Okay. Now, see there. So, the answers are very near to the correct explanation. But this is the way you answer, okay? I'm not criticizing you. Very good. Now, now, for the sake of all the students, please listen here. Deep inguinal ring, we already know, is the, okay, gap, a small opening in the fascia transversalis. So it is present a bit posteriorly. But that is not the answer here. I want the exact site. So it is present slightly above, okay? Around 1.25 centimeter above the mid inguinal point. And how I uh, feel that mid inguinal point? This is the midpoint between ASIS and symphysis pubis. Symphysis pubis, very easy to palpate. It is a midline structure, midline joint. And ASIS are another important bony prominence which is easy to felt. Just mark right at the middle of that. Okay, this is called mid inguinal point about 1.25 centimeter superior to that is the deep inguinal ring present. So place the thumb there and a bit of, you know, pressure is given inside after the reduction of the hernia and ask the patient to cough. Now, how do we interpret it? Let's talk about this. If the hernia or herniation is controlled, then the hernia is an indirect inguinal hernia. Control means the hernia cannot come out or cannot bulge outside now because you are pressing right there in the deep inguinal ring and the hernia is already reduced, okay? You can just feel it on the tip of your finger, but the real bulge cannot be seen. If the herniation is not controlled, uh, even after placing the thumb over the deep ring, that means I cannot control it. Still the bulge is coming that means it is a direct hernia because direct hernia is occurring from Hasselbeck triangle, which is medial to the deep inguinal ring. Or sometimes even the femoral hernia, if it is the case, then of course it cannot be controlled because of this ring occlusion test. Let's move on. Now, uh, just uh, look at this picture. It will make your concept very clear. See this, the examiner is, uh, you know, uh, putting thumb over the deep inguinal ring and asking the patient to cough. Now I cannot see any bulge here, okay? So this is an indirect inguinal hernia. Whereas I can see a big bulge medial to the thumb. That means this is a case of direct inguinal hernia. So this is 
not controlled by the ring occlusion test whereas it is controlled by ring occlusion test now, another important you know clinical examination we do uh, to find out which type of hernia is a three finger test this is known as g man's test it is helping to distinguish the direct indirect and femoral hernia not very commonly done though in the clinical practice because of some fallacy here the index finger is kept over the deep inguinal ring middle finger is kept over the superficial inguinal ring and the ring finger is kept over the saphenous opening okay over the saphenous opening and um, you know femoral hernia usually occurs from there now where is this saphenous opening this is around 4 cm below and lateral to the pubic tubercle so it is present near the femoral triangle or in the femoral canal ask the patient to cough and feel the impulse after that if your index finger is feeling the impulse then this is indirect inguinal hernia whereas if the middle finger is feeling the impulse then it can be indirect or direct okay it can be both but more commonly it's a indirect one and if the ring finger is feeling the impulse then it is a femoral hernia now look at this picture this is how we do it see this okay this is the appropriate way this is the deep inguinal ring this is the superficial inguinal ring and here is the saphenous opening so three fingers g man's test another part of examination of the hernia is percussion auscultation and transillumination test as we have you know listed before now if bowel is the content then during percussion it is hyper resonant note but once it has a got strangulated or if it once it has converted into the strangulated hernia okay uh, the bowel sounds are not that uh, common means the that is a dead bowel now uh, and it will lose its peristaltic movement and all those things so the typical hyper resonant sound is not heard omentum and fat is dull and doesn't have bowel sounds definitely there is no bowel there okay so they are dull in percussion and a fluid filled sac trans illuminate if we do the trans illumination test example is hydrocele because it has got clear fluid we have uh, learned this before in case of cyst topic when the fluid uh, is clear inside that sac the trans illumination test is positive now see this this is how trans illumination test is done uh, and this is a hydrocele now hydrocele is a very important differential diagnosis of hernia hydrocele is a pure scrotal swelling i can get above the swelling easily and nothing is coming from above okay so this is a, a hydrocele and trans elevation test is strongly positive now with this uh, discussion we have done uh, the clinical examination of uh, hernia and this is the way how we diagnose uh, inguinal hernia and the femoral hernia with clinical examination